I'm Tim Herrera with the Sacramento County Office of Education here with another Teacher of the Year profile. We're speaking with Jawan Richards, who is one of two teachers over the year for the Twin Rivers Unified School District. Thanks for joining us. My pleasure. So tell us where you teach. I teach at Vista Nueva Career and Technology High School. And explain uh, the type of school that that is. It is an alternative school. Um, we have a little over 26,000 students in our district and 158 of those attend the alternative program. In comparison to the comprehensive program, we have 158 to 2,000. So it's a very, very small population of students. And explain this population of students. These are students who uh, have struggled to be successful in a conventional setting. That's correct. They had difficulty in the comprehensive program. It's usually attendance is the problem. But then again, at our 158 students, 30 of those students are homeless. So that means there was no one assisting those students or encouraging those students to come to school. So they missed a lot of school, some a whole year behind. Um, a lot of credit recovery requirements for those students. Um, we have a considerable amount that are already parents. So they're now trying to get their high school education and also raise a child. So that becomes very difficult too as well. Um, we have uh, around 30 of our 158 students are also, uh, they would need some additional help with IEPs, 504s, accommodations, students with disabilities. So explain the challenges uh, of uh, teaching in that environment because you have students uh, who are, are homeless, students who are way behind in credit, mm -hmm. and not to mention the, the personal trauma that they've suffered. That's correct. So all of that bears in mind, you know, you're teaching history and English language arts, mm -hmm. but I don't want to downplay the importance of the content that mm -hmm. you're teaching because it's important, but you really have to focus on the social and emotional wellness of these students. That's correct. That seems to be the biggest problem, not only in our small population, but throughout all the schools right now. Uh, we're not meeting the needs of our kids when it comes to their social and emotional needs. So it's imperative that I not only be their teacher, but to be their mentor, their coach, sometimes even their parent to help gu guide them. Um, these children need a lot of help. I always tell other teachers, if you're at the comprehensive school, come down and walk a day in my shoes and tell me how easy it is, because it's not easy. Uh, our kids need someone to know that they care. Once you establish that relationship with those students, those kids blossom and become successful and are proud of themselves. And that's one thing I like about teaching at the alternative program. So you're really trying to instill confidence in, mm -hmm. in students who are faking their confidence maybe, uh, and, but you know what their needs are and you're trying to build that in them. Well, a lot of teachers see it. Uh, you have a student that what they don't do is, they may not do their work, but they don't talk, they're quiet, so they kind of blend in. Under the radar. Yes, yeah. so you, sometimes you may forget about them as a teacher, and when you do that, here you got a student that ends up with a F or a D, and that's failing those students. You know, my motto is this, if the student comes to my class and they come there as often as possible, I will ensure that they succeed. If they fail, I fail them. And I don't like to be a failure. I worked too hard in my lifetime to be successful. So how did you become a teacher? What was the path that got you there? Well, I tried a little teaching when I was in the military. I taught for uh, Chicago community colleges and the Los Angeles community colleges systems. Um, but the difference with that population, they're already adults and they come to the classroom prepared because they know they spent their money, their tuition money, to uh, get an education. Whereas with our other population of students, you have to get them in the door. You have to get them in the door and once you get them in the door, you can pretty much mold them and let them know that you care. And usually they'll do anything for you. What drew you to alternative education? Um, God. Because when it came time, I was a uh, vice principal at the junior high school, I mean not junior high, school, elementary school, and that position got cut. Uh, and then I was offered the opportunity to select another place to go. And I just threw my hands up and I said, God, just guide me. And when I got to my school, 
I, I think I walked around in shock for like three months because I didn't realize this population of students existed. Mm -hmm. So then I realized there was a reason I, had, I was sent there. And um, since I've been there, I've developed quite a few programs, uh, all of the intramural program for our kids so that they have something to do after school. Uh, I like chess, so I offer chess to our students. Uh, I coach the boys var varsity basketball team, so we're in a league. We haven't won first place yet, but we came pretty close. Um, I allow girls on that team too because that's the only organized sport for the alternative programs. We play against all the alternative schools in all the districts. So, so how important is it for you to make that personal connection with your students in the alternative program? I mean, how important? Yeah, is tell me about the value of that. <laughs> the value of that is uh, that could mean success or failure because you have, your students must trust you. If they trust you, they'll pretty much do anything for you. In turn, they think they're doing it for you, but they're actually doing it for themselves. And it makes them feel good. That relationship with my students, I'm their number one advocate. So that relationship must be strong. And what about the relationships with the families? In oh. your situation, you may not have um, all the family members there, mm -hmm. but when, you, when you're able to connect with the families, tell me how you do it and, and, and how important that is. Well, I believe in uh, the connection with the parents. I identify the fact whether or not that kid is a foster child, homeless, or with another family member, maybe an aunt or a grandmother. Um, I let all the family members know that it's important that I have their help to help their child succeed. And it's communication. Um, I have to work with the kid orally for instruction, kinetically, visually. If all those tactics do not drive that child to be successful, then it's time for me to pick up the phone and ask, can I get a guardian or a parent or somebody down to the school to help me help their child? And that's what it's all about. Those family members helping me to ensure that their child is successful. So that everyone's involved in the education. Absolutely. It's a group effort. Absolutely. Yeah. Even with, I do with my colleagues too. That child may not have me all six periods. So that means they have five other teachers. I utilize my colleagues to support me as well when it comes to that child's success. So what does it mean to you to be named as a, as a teacher of the year for your district? I was in total shock once again. Because I, you know, everybody kept saying they'll never pick an alternative teacher teacher from an alternative program will never get selected. And I kept saying, but we're teachers too. And I'm just as good as the teacher at the comprehensive program. So why can't I be selected? And when it happened, I, all I could say was, oh my God, it happened. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so and I walked upon the stage and received my shake from the superintendent and my plaque. So what would you say to those people who are considering not only a career in teaching, but in alternative education to, to work with kids who really need the extra help. But what I say to them? Yeah. Uh, most rewarding job you could ever have. That's it. Most rewarding really? job you could yeah. ever have. You're making a difference because all of those students that came to you in the alternative program had nowhere else to go. They had no other choice. And do you get a chance to see students after they've left school? Do they come back to see you and you see how successful they are? Yes. How does that make you feel? Very good. I have, uh, a young lady just came back from boot camp in the military. Oh. Looking at all so, so good. So the profile is sharp and very much mature. And, and that's the impression that you had on her to make her want to pursue something like that. Well, there's so many choices in life. You know, not everybody's going to go to college and become a doctor or a lawyer. Mm -hmm. you know, there's, other, you know, there's trade programs that you can get into that is much needed in our society. So you have to prepare yourself. That's why our school is career and technology. There are other paths that you can take. Mm. Well, it was nice meeting with you, nice speaking with you. My we pleasure as well. Joan Richards, who is one of two teachers of the year for the Twin Rivers Unified School District. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you.